And now we're going to look at the second reading. Remember, we're at this feast of Peter and Paul. Now Paul is going to speak. This is his letter to the Galatians. And the part that we're going to be looking at, you see, uh, he's going to say, look, I didn't bring you this good news. God did. Through me, but it God, you see. He's got enemies in Galatia. You see, he's preaching. You believe in Jesus Christ and give your heart to him. And he will dwell in you. And uh, you will have divine life in you. And when you die, you'll be with God forever. And uh, his his former Jewish scholars were very upset with that. God gave us a law. And that's what keeps us right with God, that law. And Paul is saying, no, it doesn't. It's faith that keeps us right with God. But a faith that doesn't produce works is dead. But it's the faith. So, um, but he's got enemies in Galatia. He preached. The other guys came along and tried to undo it. And so he's writing to them. Actually, Galatians is sort of a ground plan for Romans. But it's all, you know, the theme is you're saved by the mercy of God, which works. Faith comes through hearing. It doesn't come through law. So the reality is, is brought to you through preaching, through example. It's there. And the Spirit lays hold of it and interprets it for you. And that's how people are converted. Now, it's a very complex, you know, not very complex, but, you know, we're going to have St. Fulton Sheen pretty soon. Well, I can remember, I was seven or eight years old or whatever I was, our whole family would gather around the radio. There were no televisions in those days. You know, gather around the radio and listen every Sunday night to this hour put on, and it was Fulton Sheen preaching. It was wonderful. Now that I think back, the reason it was wonderful was this man, besides being eloquent and intelligent, was in touch with the reality he was talking about. And that's why people, and not just Catholics, Protestants, even others, Jewish or whoever, would listen to him, because something was coming out from him besides words. And that's a preacher. So, we, those of us who have to preach, our first obligation is to get, let the Lord purify us from sin, bring us close to Him, and help us fall in love with Him. Then when we talk, you know, we could be a Fulton Sheen Jr., you know, in touch with the reality. So, anyway, uh, so they came, you see, and, and, uh, said, this guy, Paul, he's a renegade. You know, we have a, over a thousand years of this uh, Torah, and now he's going to say it's second rate, it's not, you know, and he's wrong. If you want to enter the chosen people, you get circumcised, you embrace the whole Torah, and you start going to synagogue, and you'll be okay. And Paul is saying, that's over now. There's a new law. And so, he, this letter is written to overcome, to uh, regain for the Galatians a vision of how God saved. Does that mean that every Jewish person did that was a bad person? No. They might have even been convinced they were right. Probably were. Some were just mad, like every place, you know. Uh, and some were had lost their preeminence in the community, whatever community, back in Jerusalem or wherever, because everybody's going over to the Christian side. So, that's what they're trying to tell people. And so, you see, the first thing Paul says, this is not, he starts, the, our reading starts uh, in verse 11 of chapter 1. But I'm going to read a little bit so you get an idea. Paul, an apostle, not from human beings. Where is my Bible? Uh, 
I'm sure it's on Thropon, but we'll take a check. Uh, Galatians. Galatians comes after 2 Corinthians, Romans 1 core, 2 core, and then Gep. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Might help you. That, when I first learned that, it helped me a lot to find Galatians a little bit quicker. And so, not from, see, not from man nor by man, but through the mediation or by Jesus Christ. You see. Uh, and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brothers who are with me to the churches, the gatherings, you see, the ecclesia, the gatherings uh, in Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might rescue us from the present evil age in accord with the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory and forever and ever. Amen. Summing up what God did for us. Get us out of this swamp. You know, where everything is dictated, not for them, they didn't have one, but by the television, by all the incitements to immorality, especially in our day, sexual immorality and financial immorality. And be trapped in evil. Okay. Now, he starts the letter. First thing he says is, uh, I'm amazed that you are so quickly forsaking the one who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, not that there is another, but there are some who are disturbing you and wish to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach uh, to you a gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let that one be accursed. It's a strong word, anathema. Uh, as we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone preaches to you a gospel other than the one that you received, let him be accursed. Am I now currying favor? You see, because what they're saying, he made a nice, easy religion up for you. And you're all following it, contributing to his collections, you know, and, and uh, listening to what he's got to say, and he's getting power. But he's got a watered-down demand. And what does he say? See, So am I now currying favor when I'm saying anybody who's not preaching this is cursed? I'm not going to make a lot of friends that way. And so he's saying that. Or am I seeking to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a slave of Christ. On that we can all take to heart. Am I a people pleaser? And if I'm a preacher, especially, am I trying to make everybody like me? Or am I preaching the truth? Now, I can preach the truth. They don't have to hate me for it. But if my... You see what he's saying, though, right? Okay. So now, the, the part that we have in our reading. Now, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it. It came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. He came to me and stood there in front of me in all his glory, struck me blind and said, I'm Jesus that you're persecuting. So Paul learned first the total gratuity of grace. He was heading the other way. Uh, he learned the risen reality of Jesus Christ and the fact that he's identified with his believers. Why are you persecuting me, he says. So those who persecute Christians are persecuting Jesus Christ because he is identified with them. So that's what he's saying here, you see. Uh, when God, or when he, from my mother's womb, had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me, that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult. Even then, he says, look, I didn't go back and check my stuff out with the other guys. I went off into the desert to pray. Can you imagine being a devout Pharisee and already standing there and watching him kill Stephen and agreeing to it? And all of a sudden, here's Jesus standing right there, knocks him off his horse, 
in a blinding light that literally blinds him, and he still sees Jesus, you know, he's he's been impressed, huh? Uh, so he went back, and he's not going to tell us all that here, uh, but he will, and Acts tells us. He went in, and it was finally... Uh, the Lord told someone to go pray over him and give him his sight and baptize him. And that's what happened. So then he says there, you see, uh, that the gospel I preached, you see, I didn't get from men. Uh, okay. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days, two weeks, But I did not see any of the other apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. And as to what I'm writing you, behold, before God I am not lying. In other words, his detractors must have said, oh, he hung around with them, picked up a few ideas, and made them his own kind of, and now he's preaching his own gospel. And taken up a collection, remember? He says it's going to the poor in Jerusalem, but who knows? I mean, he was vilified. Whoa. Uh, and um, I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. He only kept hearing that, quote, the one who was the ones persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. Do you see Paul, his vision of the mercy of God, tell the world about it? And that's his preaching. So we've heard about Peter. You know, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have, I'll raise you up. There's a funny story told about a Renaissance Pope who was showing St. Peter's and all the gold and all the statues and everything else. And uh, he said to his visitor, you know, Peter in himself can no longer say, silver and gold, I have none. And the other guy said, yeah, but you can't complete this phrase either. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. It was very, sort of a, so be careful. And so, uh, so they glorified God because of me, you see. Uh, and so that's the, uh, the report that he gives about himself and about what God did for him. So we've heard about Peter. We've heard about Paul. Um, Peter's speech, Paul's letter. And now we'll move on, uh, because that's the, that's our second reading, Galatians, to look at the gospel, which is going to be about Peter and John, uh, because Paul wasn't around at this point. Uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll stop there and uh, go to the gospel.